Hey, this is James Diamond with Glock CNC, and this will be a short video on motor selection and then some of the options that you can get with that motor. For example, you know what pulley you're going to need if you want to add a pulley to the motor. So let's get right into it. We'll take a look. If you look on the screen, this is our website as it is currently. It may change over time, of course. But you can see that this is on the 1200 watt motor and we also offer a 750 watt motor and probably the most common question I get is, hey, you know, the two, which, which one do I, you know, want to go with? And that, you know, really that depends on your application and kind of your buying philosophy, if you will. If you've got something that's notoriously hard to, you know, mill or turn, then, you know, go with a more powerful one. And if you don't have something that's uh, that difficult, you might be only working in wax or you might be working in just aluminum or something like that, or taking really light passes in steel, then you can get away with a 750 watt for sure. And if you think to yourself too, you know, what might I need to cut in the future? If you think in the future you might possibly have a project that will need more power then well, you're better off having the power. And if you're like me and a lot of other guys that actually buy from us, uh, our philosophy pretty much is I just, like, and same with tools and machine tools, is I just get the most powerful or the best I can get <laughs> with what I can afford. And then that way I don't have to worry about whether I should have gotten the more powerful one. But it's up to you and up to your budget, of course. You can do what you want. Okay, so we're on the page right now. Let's take a look at some of the different options to make sure you're getting what you actually need. Now, if you've bought or are buying a headstock from us and you selected the ribbed pulley option, this is a ribbed pulley right here. The belt looks like this, okay? Then this is what you'll want to select. This is the pulley that you'll want to get. And all of our, if you buy the motor from us with a pulley, it will come with a belt. And if you click this box, you will get an extra belt. So you'd get two belts. Uh, and the different headstocks, uh, all of uh, all of the ERs, and all of all of them with a, what's a 30 millimeter shaft on them, you can get in the ribbed. And if you are getting a 5C or a BT30, those only come with. Well, we only sell ribbed pulleys for them. Uh, obviously, you can make you know your own pulley as well. If you have a Sureline and you're connecting this to a Sureline and you need to have it compatible with the Sureline's V-Groove, let's take a look at like this, the V-Groove, then obviously the Sureline belt type is what you're going to select. The motor end of it, if that's what you select, this is what you would get. It is, has three different steps to it. Now the, the belt that we include it work on the first two steps. Now some people don't use the large one for high speed. So we don't include, we just kind of give that as an option to save money for people who don't ever think they'll use that third step. You'll get the long, this one you want to hear, the long belt for the third groove if you choose to use it. Now what I will mention is the numbers that you see, 190 millimeter, 210 millimeter, as far as the, the, the belt length, that can sometimes be plus or minus 10 millimeters depending on what was available to us because there's always, I shouldn't say always, Currently, there are supply issues in some areas, and we might have to buy, you know, 10 millimeters up or down from that. Okay, moving on, let's talk about other options. And with the other options, I want to also talk about uh, CNC control. Before we get to that, let's talk about the option right here for the manual motor control. That is this. The first switch here is forward reverse. The next one is engage, which just activates the motor. It says, hey, you can go ahead and run now. Knob obviously speed, and where it says brake is, well, it's the brake. And if you need to know this, because I know some people do this or use it, is they have a fixed RPM that everything runs at, and when they hit the brake and then turn the brake off, they want it just to spin up to that RPM, and that's what it'll do wherever you last left this knob and you disengage the brake, it will go back to that RPM of course, the engage has to remain on. Hopefully that made sense. Now the plug right here, yours might look different depending on which motor that you've gotten. When you get the driver, there will be a plug just like this, but nothing's wired to it. You'll need to unplug that and then plug this in. And you can't run both CNC and the manual control box at the same time on that driver. 
this is really handy if you're the kind of person who ever wants to, you know, run it by ear, you know, and just manually control it real quick. I don't always want to be able, I don't always want to control the speed to the computer if I just trying to do something quick or trying to discover what RPM I want to run the motor on a particular cup. So very handy to have, eh, 45 bucks, you know, why not kind of thing, it's, it's handy. Uh, voltage wise, it, this is a 110 uh, voltage motor uh, by default. If you need 220, this is the option. I'm a big fan of the 220. If you can run 220, I think that's the way to go. They run cooler. And the delete mounts is exactly that. It, you can get the motor with, without the mounts. Now, the CNC control, we'll talk about that for a minute. The motor, there's two varieties when it comes to motion control. There's a lot of motion control that works with a zero to five volt signal. And there's a wide variety of CNC controls that work with zero to 10 volt. So there's two ways that you can use that with this driver. Uh, number one is we include resistors and that will split your signal in half. So whatever it's sending out, if, it, if it's, for example, if it's sending out 10 volts because you want the motor to run at full speed, adding those resistors will actually bring that down to five volts. Hopefully that makes sense. The other option that you can do, and you can do it within the cam, is just you can take whatever the top speed that you want to run at, you know, and you're, you've told the cam that you're, motor can do is you cut it in half. So if you actually wanted to run at, let's say 7,000 RPM, um, and that would normally equal 10 volts, then if you say 3,500, that will get you to the five volts. Hopefully that's clear. I know some people will use PWM or pulse width modulation. This doesn't natively take that, but the solution is actually really simple and quite cheap. If you go on Amazon or eBay or a number of electronic sources, you can get these small boards that will convert the PWM signal to a zero to five volt signal that you can then feed into the driver. So easy, easy solution. I think they're in between like, mm, I've seen them as cheap as like nine bucks to maybe $25 has been the most expensive one that I've really seen. I'm sure you can get them as expensive as you wanted, but that's the range I generally see them in. I'm going to cut this little piece into the video before it ends because one thing I did want to bring up is where to find the manual for the motors as well as some documentation. If you go to our website, one of the menu items is downloads. That's where it's currently at. I may relabel that as documentations, but as it stands now on the website, it is downloads. So if you click on that, you'll see the motor driver manuals and some hookup information. These are PDFs. Once you click on them, uh, you can download them. So hopefully all of that was helpful on both selecting your motor and using it.